All right, welcome everybody and good evening and Merry Almost Christmas. Uh, this week it's just going to be an open session about Christmas stories, Christmas traditions, uh, whatever you like really. This is this is your session. Um, Jana, do you want to start? Oh, you it. like my voice so much. I like I like <laughs> your laugh. <laughs> It's my superpower, Your and laugh I got it from joy. my yeah. I got it from my mom. It's like uh, my heritage <laughs> from my mom. Okay, um, evenings, uh, um, Christmas evening. Okay, uh, first of all, I just wait in that moment when I will visit my um, godmother because on Christmas we are. Uh, very often visited godmothers, godfathers, and um, I just waited all these questions. Why are you not married yet? <laughs> <laughs> when we got children, <laughs> I don't know why. I am a woman in my thirties, and like <laughs> this question, questions every year. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to prepare some like, like original answer for this. <laughs> and sounds like very original in uh, uh, every year because like why is they are so interested in it like, I don't know <clears throat> but but I prepared it already um, uh, ingredients for kucha so it's waiting it's time and uh, I will make kucha with uh, uh, pop seeds and with honey uh, and I also will show you it in private messages. I will make a photo and I'll send you, Please, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, you will see my precious. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I, I'm always very proud about my babies. So I, I often show them to the public. <laughs> that sounds good. Anastasia, what do you got planned? Uh, on Christmas or on the New Year? Either or both. Or both. Whatever. Uh, Christmas, I think uh, I don't celebrate or uh, it was um, rarely before. Uh, and uh, on the New Year, I uh, will go to uh, my boyfriend's family and we will I will be celebrating New Year with the family. I think the first time uh, since my uh, 17 or 18. Wow. Uh, and it's it's an interesting experience for me. Uh, um, la, 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 la. I, I love very much this uh, uh, very much this day by Buddha. What? This time of year? Yes, because okay. uh, it gives very uh, um, pleasure, uh, very much pleasure, and uh, it's um, atmosphere, I love it, and uh, mm -hmm. I love very much to give uh, some um, presents and preparing it, uh, and preparing it um, the month before, uh, mm -hmm. every time, every year. Uh, and uh, I like to uh, get gifts and presents. I every year um I write written uh, wish lists, and it's very important. And uh, I want everyone get uh, uh things he needs in this time. And after uh the new year, it's my no as uh. uh in months with a half, uh, it will be my birthday, and uh, I'm waiting this uh, too. And uh, after my birthday, uh, the winter ends, and uh, it will be warm. And I'm waiting for it too very much because in cold weather I cannot uh, go outside. I am. I have uh, some depression, and I don't like it. I want to celebrate uh, New Year or 
uh, my birthday one time, once uh, in the warm country. Mm -hmm. Want to feel this experience? Yeah. Sounds like you're very. I have joke. Yeah. I have joke about depression. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Some people have season depression. I have demi season depression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a very good joke. <laughs> uh, you can laugh or you can cry. <laughs> um, uh, Lud Ludmilla, welcome. If you'd like to just listen, you're welcome to just listen. But um, if you want to join in the chat, we're just talking about talking about. Yes, good evening. It's so nice to join you. It's so interesting to. <laughs> to your ideas how to celebrate these uh, uh, days yeah, as for me usually we go to my father's place uh, near Kiev uh, but this year he decided uh, to go to Vietnam <laughs> with his wife uh, he said you know I'm old enough and maybe it's the last uh, chance uh, when I can uh, have such a travel somewhere <clears throat> And uh, now we are thinking about what should we do uh, on this Christmas day. So maybe my uh, sisters will come to me and uh, it's something new. Mm -hmm. It's so, uh, but it's so nice uh, to have Christmas. Every time we've got some dreams and uh, now we've got the only dream I think all Ukrainians think about. And we hope yeah, this is uh, the uh, the day when uh, we just can dream. Yeah. Um. Uh, sorry, I was I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, Go back to save me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you always know what to say. <laughs> Guys, this is so interesting. Oh, uh, but I, you know, I, I, uh, yes, uh, the interesting question uh, for this year is because uh, uh, before we celebrated uh, this uh, Christmas and uh, uh, St. Nicholas Day, for example, uh, for old style. Yes, and now we've got these uh, days uh, on new style. And <laughs> it turns out uh, now we've got two St. Nicholas days, uh, two Christmas <laughs> days. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's such a mixture <laughs> the children must love it <laughs> two Christmases sure yeah <laughs> and also you can create new traditions if you, yeah. you have a chance to create new traditions with these two days of each no? like going on holiday to Vietnam <laughs> uh, uh, th this is very interesting for me <laughs> Well, yes, because, you know, it's uh, really expensive to heat your house with gas during the winter. And uh, my father counted that uh, it would be uh, much more cheaper for him to uh, find <laughs> a cheap air flight than to go there. <laughs> what a pragmatic <laughs> way to go on a trip. <laughs> That's a great oh justification. God. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Oh my god! I, I'm wondering how you can use that justification to 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 afford a trip to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, James, welcome. How are you? Would you like to join in, or are you just listening today? Uh, no, I'll join in. So, hello, Ooh. everybody. Hi. Um, I, uh, this is my first opportunity to join on the group call. I'm one of the uh, uh, English instructors. I've got three students that I'm uh, work with every weekend. Um, so mm -hmm. this is my first time on the group call, just uh, listening in and seeing what's going on. I like to hear everybody uh, talking and practicing. Great. How's it going with your students? Oh, fantastic. Oh, we started cool. off um, following the, uh, the, the curriculum you had um, provided. Yeah. And we, after about, I don't know, 15 minutes of going through the lessons, uh, with all my students, we decided we just better off just talking. So yeah, we just get out and talk for like an hour, hour and a half every time now. That's uh, fantastic. Know them and uh, it seems like it's more productive just to talk about everyday life and what we did the week and what's coming up. And it's really interesting. 
Yeah, that's that's brilliant. I'm really glad that that's that's clicked for you because uh, it's very easy to find things to talk about. Yeah. Um, most of the time, anyway. <laughs> uh, right. Where are you joining from? Uh, I'm in Michigan. Michigan, awesome. Yeah. So we're across the globe today. Um, Europe, Australasia, and and North America. Nice. Veet, what have you got planned for Christmas? I haven't decided yet, actually. I uh, know my plans for New Year. I will, will be with my friends as a couple of years before. But for Christmas, I'm just considering options, whether to uh, make some Christmas Eve or just uh, let this day be a regular one. Yeah. Um. Has everyone got decorations or is not everyone not really feeling in the mood this oh, year? Oh, about decoration, guys, about decorations. Uh, uh, will anyone make this traditional Ukrainian decoration called pavuk? And <laughs> let's say, Can you tell more about it? Halloween. Okay. It's like a very traditional Ukrainian decoration for uh, uh, Christmas. Uh, it's made from uh, Soloma Sino. <laughs> Can help me anyone how it's called in, in English. And uh, uh, it's like very uh, ecological, ecological. Uh, and uh, it's like uh, you just use uh, threads uh, and make this uh, um, uh, decoration. In it's like <clears throat> oh, I, I will find now pictures and will show you because it's it's really cool and if anyone don't know what to do on this Christmas Eve, uh, you can find some uh, um, ingredients for this decoration at Magis, this traditional Ukrainian decoration for New Year's and Christmas Eve. Oh, wait a second, I will show you. Oh, Soloma, Straub, Straub, thank you, nice Thank you. Like, it, <laughs> it's decoration from Straub and Treads. And it's uh, it looks it looks it looks very cool. And uh, now I will find you a picture about this. Like, just give me a minute. You can talk about tennis and else. I I will send it in chat. Okay, let's talk amongst ourselves while she finds her. <laughs> okay. oh, we had someone new and then they disappeared. We'll have a discussion while teachers out of the class. <laughs> <laughs> teachers out of the class. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask, can I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, in Europe and in USA, as I understand, um, Christmas is more popular, yes, than New Year. The New Year, Christmas is more uh, like um, mm, no. In Ukraine, uh, after New Year, you start new life, you start new plans and other things. And uh, how it's in uh, USA? James, do you want to? What? I was asking if James wanted to check, answer that one. We were talking oh. about this the other day, and um, I feel like in uh, maybe in the UK and in New Zealand anyway, Christmas is very much like a family thing. And then New Year is what you leave your family and go and hang out with your friends <laughs> most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you want, I'm sorry, I, I forgot you... that you're from New Zealand. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> if you want, I can tell you about Mexico. Yeah, um, go ahead. Like um, in Mexico, <laughs> we have something that we call a marathon. And actually, our celebrations begin on um, December the 12th because majority of people uh, in Mexico are Catholics. So the 12th is a day of the Virgin. And then uh, we have four days, like uh, if you're a super Catholic, you go on a pilgrimage to, to uh, the temple and celebrate, blah, 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 and just start gathering with the family. Then on the 16th, we have uh, something that we call posadas. Uh, let's say that, for example, you arrange with your family and friends and you say like, hey, San, one day at your house, next day at Janan's, next day at Nastasia's, then with James, then with Bid. And with 
Lyudmila. So you arrange from the 16th till the 24th. And every day you will gather in someone else's house. If you're a super Catholic, you will sing special songs, verses. The children will wear costumes and the children will go to the, to the, to the houses and sing and gather uh, candy by their singing. It's like caroling. Uh, and you will eat special foods and the family gets together. So you can do, do this with your family, your friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Um, then on the 24, we have Christmas Eve which is super important because it's a family event. Everyone gets together at night. They have like very, this huge uh, dinner. Uh, then on the 25th, uh, on the morning, Christmas, some people open the presents. Then we have more days of partying till uh, the 31st, which is New Year. This is more uh, of an event with, with friends. Uh, depending on the, on, the, on, the, on the people, there are some like strange... <laughs> strange co uh, costumes like for example um, my family is from small town so uh, we don't do this because we 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 are like my family like my my direct family and I we live in the city but the extended family lives in the town so on the 31st you are waiting for the new year to to arrive uh, some people take out guns and shoot in the air like a way to punish the 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 year that it's ending for the bad things that happen so when the clock is about to strike 12, when you're going to change from New Year, everyone has uh, these glasses or bowls with uh, grapes and you have 12 grapes, one for each uh, toll. So uh, as the clock is striking, you're trying to eat the grapes as fast as you can because each grape is a wish. And I also told you about this uh, special tradition of uh, colors uh, in the underwear. So this is another tradition. Yeah, I waited the story. <laughs> I waited the story. Yes. Yes. It was very favorite story. Yes. Just for those who haven't heard, um, it is, some people believe that if you want to find love on New Year's Eve, it, you, you should wear red clothes, like underwear. If you want to have money, you should wear yellow underwear. So you see in, in, in supermarkets in preparation for this, like, uh, the, the places where they sell clothes, the supermarkets, some 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 clothes stores, uh, you you will see all of these uh, really really, uh, I don't know, really really uh, uh big uh stalls with with this colored uh, underwear uh, for men and women, of course, and uh, this is the New Year's Eve. Now on the second, there is another. <laughs> Sorry, we like to party a lot. This is why we call it the marathon. So Christmas uh, in Mexico sounds exhausting. <laughs> yes, yes, you, you really need to prepare for this. <laughs> you really need to prepare for this. So um, on the 6th, uh, it is um, uh, the day of the wise men. So, you know, in Catholic tradition, um, these uh, three wise men go to, to baby Jesus and offer him gifts. So we have a special uh, bread. Uh, which is like in the uh, shape of uh, it, it, it. I don't know. Sorry, the word in English, but it's like a like a, a cake with a hole in the middle. It's it's like a giant donut. I don't know how to say this in in Spanish. It's called rosca. So uh, this is decorated with fruits, uh, dried fruits, uh, sugar, and we have a small um, a small figurine, a small doll. So. Uh, you have these uh, people have already started return to job to, to the work so at jobs schools you will uh, get get one of these breads from from every supermarket they sell them and you will uh, share this bread with your friends so uh, we cut the bread and the one that has the the figurine uh, inside should start saving some money because on february the 2nd there's another catholic tradition you will have to buy food, which is called tamales, and drink, which is called atole, for everyone. So this is why we call it the marathon. Marathon Lupe Reyes. Lupe, because the, the Virgin's name is Guadalupe, Virgen de Guadalupe, so the short name is Lupe. And Reyes, because it's kings, so in reference to the true wise man. So this is how we celebrate. I know it's exhausting. Mm. Thanks for listening, guys. Exhausting. <laughs> I have two you moments. Should... I have two moments. Uh, first of all, when Rebecca speaks Spanish, I have feeling like the Spanish language seducing me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Girls, <laughs> get a room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I can <laughs> I can start speaking and, and saying poetry in Spanish if you want. <laughs> no. Because I have so deep this desire to learn Spanish after Rebecca speaks some Spanish. I don't know how to explain it. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, my cheeks are red now. <laughs> I did that it I don't have purpose. a camera. <laughs> yeah, of course I know you. <laughs> okay, okay, we should get a <laughs> <laughs> Another story. Another like moment, the story. Like in Ukraine we have this phrase, it's uh, like translating in English is Happy people don't wear in pants. So, <laughs> <laughs> in oh Ukraine, if you want, if you want to be happy in New Year, you shouldn't wear any pants in New Year Eve. <laughs> oh so, if you if you want money, you wear red. If you want love, no. If you want love, you wear red. If you want money, you wear yellow. If you if you don't want anything because you're happy, you don't wear any pants. <laughs> oh, no, you, if you want to be happy. And sometimes to be happy is even more important than have love and money. Or you will be happy when you have and money and <laughs> but, but, but actually, I, I just want to point out that uh, maybe uh, English is not my native language, but there is a difference between pants and underwear, right? <laughs> So there are two different words. Yeah, it's a bit confusing uh, though because uh, people use yeah, them interchangeably uh, sometimes. Yes, yeah, I, I said uh, underwear, like this, like like what you put on your ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Like underwear so... is more American one, and pants is more British one for the same mm -hmm. thing. So I think we have a conclusion. Like parting in Mexico, it's uh, exhausting, but. Parting in Ukraine and being happy, it's definitely <laughs> way, way more extreme than Mexico. Pants are optional. <laughs> yeah, pants are optional. Oh my god. No, no, no. And I've got another question on this. Uh, you told that each color means something. And what mm -hmm. yellow, uh, what uh, blue stands for? Um, actually, <clears throat> what, what, I, what I know is about red and yellow. Of course, uh, there are many many colors to choose from, but uh, the, the normal ones are red and yellow. You could guess my next question <laughs> that I wanted to ask. <laughs> if you wear Ukrainian flag, <laughs> what are you striving <laughs> for? Okay. Um, okay, what blue? Blue, blue in our culture. Uh, I'm thinking it's, well, well associated with blue. Uh, if, if you go like to the Aztec mythology, uh it's it's associated with gods uh with uh for example uh this uh god Kukultan, like the feathered serpent or uh Tlalo. sorry they but this for me i think to put a ukrainian flag as underwear is not a good idea <laughs> like no, you, you, you you have some blue bra <laughs> some yellow pants <laughs> and you say oh god God, give me money <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, for for us, uh, I I wanted to ask now that you're bringing up uh, the colors. Um, I've noticed that, uh, for example, uh, Ukrainian bishivanka, uh, it's very beautiful. Of course, it has lots of colors, but you have like, uh, well, at least in the pictures that I've seen, like lots of red on it. Uh. Does red symbolize like this color symbolize something in in Ukrainian culture? Mm -hmm. Yes, like uh, we we have even even song about this, and mm -hmm. like uh, red, it's love, it's it's blood, it's about your family, it's about uh, all your relatives, all your ancestors, like Rodovit. I don't know how it's in in uh, in English. And uh, black, it's for soil. Oh. It's about, yeah, it's so <laughs> And mm -hmm. about, about grief very often. Like black, it's about soil, about grief. And we have like this song, Chirvone to Lubov. Red is it's love. And uh, black, it's sorrow. 
Mm, but mm. yeah, in different regions, we use uh, Ukrainians use different colors. So mm. it's not just uh, black um, and red. Sometimes it's mm. green, yellow, uh, and uh, uh, and blue. Yeah, <clears throat> it's like and traditional in colors. In Poltava region, you don't have any color. You just have it white, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. white, white yeah. uh, knitting and white. It's so beautiful. White, it's look knitted yeah. over, over white. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. It's it is gorgeous. It looks like a wedding dress, like literally. It's oh, like wow. yeah. So it's use white white threads and the white uh, uh, Vashivanka. It's it looks amazing actually. Wow, it's 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 beautiful. Uh, and this this black that you say about the earth, I I read. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. That Ukraine, one of the things that it is special for, it's that you have this very fertile black end. I, I think there is even a name for this, even a word for this type of earth, no? Which is black. No? Or maybe I'm mistaken. I don't understand questions. So... For the, uh, yeah, uh, that, the that black you have soil. Black soil, I... black earth. Black earth, that it's yeah. very uh -huh. good. Cho -cho -chornozem, chornozem. Yes, it's this, a little, this little... Is what... And in Second World them. War, Second World mm -hmm. War, uh, Germans just uh, put this soil into some wagons and transferred yes. it in Germany. Mm -hmm. Really? It's like it's yes, it's problem. Uh, it's program of Lebensraum uh, uh, when they um, occupied it all territory of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So young people was taken to the factories, like for example, my grandma. And they stole it uh, like this, our black soil, because it's very um, good for anything. Like, be, yeah, and because uh, that's why Ukrainians, uh, all, like, they uh, uh, sell almost it's like wheat and like grain, uh, grain from Ukraine. Uh, it's because of our soil. So, sorry to ask. And you, yes. This, this... So no, 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 this... it's like it's a part of our a culture, of our history. Oh, okay. It's okay, it's fine. This, this, this and some, soil... some say, some say <laughs> that uh, this it is that black, and uh, because of the blood of enemies that was <laughs> shed onto this soil. Oh, okay. And, and this soil is like in every part of Ukraine, or some in in some specific areas. In mostly. Okay. In mostly, mostly, yes, but uh, yeah, uh, like in the um, north and the west, like where uh, north, like it's a different climate area, and uh, in the uh, in the west we have actually mountains, and in this area we don't have chernos and we don't have the soil, but uh, mm -hmm. in another part, also central and south, it's all about chernos and. Rebecca, it says more than sixty-five percent of Arabic. Arable land in Ukraine is composed of Chernozem deposits, making it ideal for farming. Thanks. Sam. It's a rich Thank you guys. Um, black soil rich in organic matter. Yeah, it's because uh, this region call it a steppe. And uh, we have this grass, and with this grass, when it's dyed, it makes our land so uh, precious. It's because of steppe. <laughs> and some uh, we don't we, we need we need some Kazakhs here from Kazakhstan because they understand this word step also because they culture also deep in a history of step uh, idea of freedom idea of uh, never ending uh, <laughs> result mm, uh, skyline never ending skyline <laughs> like. <laughs> Some people I, I, I spoke I spoke with one a person she from uh, Carpathian Mountains and mm -hmm. she told me that she uh, started panicking panic uh, in a step because it's like a liminal liminal space you don't know where is the west where is the east because you see only grass and sky <laughs> <laughs> and yes I am from step yes I'm from step. <laughs> When you said Cossacks, I I I, I remembered um, this story Taras Bulba. I know his fictional character, but this was like my earliest 
reference uh, to Cossacks, I mean, in Mexico. You might not remember. Well, I, we have a joke about this bulba, and I can translate mm -hmm. it properly in Ukraine in English because it, it, it's, it's hilarious because um, in a text, as Bulba uh, told to his son that I warn you and I will I kill killed you. you. Yes, yeah. I remember this. <laughs> and joke, I read it. And jo <laughs> I read it, and actually. Joke, <laughs> and the joke uh, is with what I warn you, I will kill you. <laughs> oh my god. It's Whoa. joke, joke, I know, but I like it. <laughs> Uh, I am. I am thinking that <laughs> maybe we share some similar sense of humor in Mexico. <laughs> so listening to this joke, oh my god! You know, thanks, thanks for you, thanks for your stories. I really think that Ukrainian culture and Mexican culture, yeah, have a lot of sim similarities. Because, uh, for example, for example, I saw that little video about Spanish language and in this Spanish uh, language explained that me gusta, you can tell it to the, to your friends only for mm -hmm. loved ones. In Ukraine mm -hmm. we have the same word, we have this kohayu, you can use it only for romantic feelings and you can't use it for family members or for your friends or for your pets uh, or like and I and I saw this video because oh, I should tell this story to Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have um one word which is um like uh it comes from, from Nahuatl <clears throat> which is the ancient one of the ancient languages in Mexico and the word it's a verb actually um uh, yes lobo um and the, the word is apapachar this is the verb like an infinitive uh, and it's very beautiful because um, the translation, you cannot translate this with one word. Uh, and I have, I think I put this in the chat before. But uh, when you use this verb, uh, it means that you are hugging a person. But you are not hugging the person with your arms or with your hands. You are hugging this person with your soul. You are hugging him or her with your heart. So, so it's uh, like the idea is like if love, and tender loving care had a son, and the song was beautiful. This is the song of Papa Cher. So you use these for people like uh, I don't know your your parents, your ch your children, uh, your significant other. This is the verb that we that we use. So so it it's like being super kind to them, being super caring of them. So so in Spanish there are many beautiful words. I for for me uh, this word uh, that you have in Ukrainian. Putlaska. It sounds so beautiful. I, for me, I know that it's like to say like you're very welcome, but but it sounds like the name of a fairy princess or something like that. I, I know, I know maybe it's it makes no sense, but for me it sounds very beautiful. Putlaska. It's so interesting because <clears throat> It depends on what your native. Uh, it depends on your native language. Uh, your um, perception of another language is different. For example, for you, you told that uh, the fact that we use this sound he, it sounds mm -hmm. very soft for you. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and uh, uh, people from another countries from another languages they don't have this association actually, and it's interesting for me. For Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, my nuts is burning. <laughs> I need to do something with my nuts. <laughs> All good. Um, James, do you have any any Christmas traditions you want to share with us? What might be interesting? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. Uh, I Christmas do. tradition, um... yeah. <laughs> We've got uh, we've got an interesting uh, family mixture here of traditions. Um, we do celebrate Christmas uh, on the normal twenty um, fifth is traditional here in the U.S. Um, so we have that going on. Also, my uh, my spouse is Jewish, so we also um, celebrate all these Jewish traditions with Hanukkah and things like that. So we've got the dual celebrations: um, the Jewish uh, holiday 
moves every year on the calendar. So it's not the same as um, how the Christmas traditions are. So um, they're usually within a couple of weeks, but it's all in the December, January timeframe. So uh, I get to have double parties here, I guess, for both uh, celebrations. So it's busy at your place as well. It is busy, yeah. <laughs> and it's scattered across uh, two different uh, locations um, here in Michigan. And then uh, the other part of the family is in the Chicago area, which is about a four hour um, drive in my car to get there. So we've got uh, two different groups of people. I have a very interesting question for non-Ukrainians. Uh, what public celebrations do you have? Today I had a discussion uh, on this topic and I really want to know the inside stories as uh, public uh, celebrations in schools or preschools uh, precisely or uh, even uh, like on uh, central squares or uh, some municipal or even state celebrations like do you have some concerts uh, that are attached to Christmas or New Year or something like that it would be interesting to know as I had some um, hard discussion today and I didn't know what to oppose um... yeah that's a great question I, I'll, uh, I'll at least give you from my perspective so um, in the US it it varies um quite a bit based on the community and the mixture of the community. Some communities don't do anything. Uh, other ones are um, quite popular in celebrating and decorating their town. And um, for example, I'm sure you guys see on TV uh, in New York City, there's a big um, tree and uh, Rockefeller Center is kind of the, the center of New York City. Uh, so there's a big event and they, they light the tree and it's visited by uh, thousands or millions of people. I'm not sure. It's very busy and popular down there. Um, they have they put in a uh, an ice skating outdoor ice skating um, rink right uh, by where the tree is, so that uh, throughout the winter season, folks can go down and enjoy the celebration. The kids can ice skate. I've done that before. Um, other places like this. I'm in a small um, town here in Michigan. Um, there's nothing uh, specific. There's some. Um, decorations in the very downtown, but not a lot uh, more individual people may decorate their house and put lights on the outside um, is quite popular in lots of places. Um, as far as uh, New Year's celebration, uh, that's probably more popular as far as uh, outdoor gatherings. Um, again, you probably see the, the big cities on your TV. Uh, New York City um, has a big New Year's uh, celebration. And I've done that once when I was in my 20s, I went to New York City for the New Year's. And I can tell you it's something you only do once in your life. Um, you go down there and you're on the streets and there are so many people, you are literally jam packed. You can't move for probably five or six hours. You're stuck in the streets. There's no bathrooms. There's no, um, it was actually a miserable experience. And then also the other thing I wanted to say, if you've ever watched, um, uh, the New Year's in New York City, they have a ball that drops on Times Square. And you think you're going to see this thing when you're actually in person, that ball is on top of like a 50 story building. At the very top, it's this little teeny dot, you can barely see it. It's much better watching it on TV and not being stuck there. So um, I can say I did it, but I will never do that again. The crowd is just too large. <laughs> it but was you were uh, there. freezing cold and nowhere to go. No bathrooms anywhere. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a quick overview of the um, how it works here, at least from uh, my point of view. That's cool. At least you got um, what you can about get kids. There. What about kids? What about uh, yeah. performance um, for them? It, how how how, how it the, looks like? Most of the um, kids in school will have um, uh, holiday celebrations, so it's it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know, over the last decade or so in the U.S., it's the people are trying to be more um, politically correct and not offend anyone. So a, a lot of times in the public schools, they don't call it a Christmas party. Um, they'll call it a, uh, a, a holiday party. So it includes all of the different um, religions or whatever. It's kind of a, a general seasonal party they're having instead of specifically calling it Christmas now because they don't want to offend one one group of people, whether it's the Jewish or the Muslims or whoever it may be. So we typically just have holiday parties now. 
um, and not. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's uh, it's been a while since I've been in school. Even my kids are now in their 20s. So um, I, I assume it's still the same, but um, they typically had uh, seasonal holiday parties, they call them. Mm. We have something called mm -hmm. Christmas in the Park, which is a big concert uh, in, that happens all over, well, in the big cities in New Zealand. They, they'll, everyone will meet up at a, um, you know, the, the biggest domain or park in the city and take a rug and a, um, snacks and, and then there'll be a concert. Um, it's called Christmas in the Park, but it's, it's not very religious. It's just a, it's just a big concert, lots of kids, lots of families sitting outside, um, enjoying the atmosphere. And there's usually there's this weird thing called a Santa parade, which is where they close off the main street in Auckland. And there's a big parade of local businesses and um, shut down the streets for the day and everything like that. But I can't think of any others. School's closed by now for the summer. So there's no school things here in New Zealand. Oh. For Mexico, as I said, majority of the people are Catholics. So the stars, of course, uh, are like uh, adorned with all these Christmas decorations. Even though we have other religions in, in Mexico, uh, the main squares, the main streets, uh, the river city, they have these Christmas decorations that light at night. So it looks very beautiful because it's not just about uh, Christmas trees. Uh, for us, uh, I don't know the name of this flower, but it's a, a red flower. Uh, we call it Noche Buena in, in Spanish. It's very beautiful. It blossoms uh, like, uh, well, it's it's very popular during these days. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, we, we have green winters with no snow. So sometimes uh, the authorities will uh, install like some um, uh, ice rinks. So you can go to the ice rink and you can put on her of, of um, I don't know how, how, how these special um, these shoes that you used skates? to like oh, um, ice skates ice, ice skates yeah thank you guys yeah. I'm I'm learning <laughs> so you put you rent that one of, of those and and you and you skate uh, like in this ice rink uh, this is in the in the big cities uh, for Catholic people of course everything uh, poinsettia poinsettia uh, do you agree? Uh, so uh, for um, Catholic people, everything revolves around the church. So as I said, um, we can uh, have this uh, visiting of friends and everyone. Uh, children will play, will put up like plays uh, at school. This uh, visiting uh, of each other's houses uh, that starts on the 16th is called Posada. So uh, even though people, when they grow up, are not so religious, uh, everyone, someone will be organizing a posada in, in, at school, uh, at, at the office, and, and they will gather in one place and have drinks and everything. For New Year's Eve, it is many restaurants offer like dinners. So you can book your place in a restaurant if you don't want to cook or if you don't want to have, have no one in that city to meet with. And you can attend these these uh, meetings, and they are have like music and, and and everything. So it's, I I would say that the Christmas Christmas Eve is more uh, oriented to religion if you are practicing Catholic, uh, and and the and the New Year's is 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 more secular, but the important thing is like to have uh, this food and and these meetings and and everything. That's a general like, of what happens in Mexico. Yeah, that's the, that's the flower scent. Thank you. Um, what kind of mm -hmm. what what traditions in in Ukraine are similar to to other countries in in um in the rest of we the world? We have this. Uh, I just have this funny story. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> I'm sure you waited me. <laughs> <laughs> the time okay 
in school we have this little play on this uh, um, on the vacations this winter vacation and it's it's like uh, almost like vertep traditional ukrainian theater theater uh, for people and i play it in this uh, play uh, a god it's traditional character and this uh, god like uh, trying to uh, uh, fake that she is uh, sick and she asked it for candies <laughs> and i was so successful in this um, uh, a role in this uh, character as a god so i played this god uh, till this my uh, last a uh, uh, year of the school <laughs> and did, did you get given candy yes <laughs> and 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 kids and kids all worried about me because like uh, they wasn't mad at me because i was so like <laughs> good in my actor in my acting so they yeah, just waiting with this god will stand up and she will be fine and uh, don't feel sick <laughs> You are very convincing. Yes, and I would uh, like to add that uh, in this vertep, also there are different characters, for example, an angel and a devil, uh, and uh, some more others, and uh, there are so uh, interesting uh, songs, uh, Christmas carols are sung during this uh, performance. And it's really very funny. Uh, for example, my children uh, adore uh, having fun uh, at this period, and uh, they uh, uh, get dressed in fancy dress costumes, uh, and they paint their faces, and uh, they sing uh, these uh, funny songs, uh, and uh, they get also candies and some money for this so uh, it's uh, really similar to mexico's traditions also yes in, in mexico we call them um pastorelas uh, pastorela comes uh, i will write the word uh pastorela is like singular uh, I, I wrote it incorrectly sorry so pastorela comes from the word pastor which means uh, shepherd uh uh, history says that when uh, Spanish came and, and conquered Mexico, they, of course, noticed that the Aztecs and, and other uh, indigenous civilizations had their own gods. So uh, one way to convert them was to destroy their gods, like full force approach, uh, brute force approach. And the other way was like to gently try to entice them into Catholic faith. faith. Spanish uh, tried a uh, boat both approaches uh, but the most successful of course was to entice them and and they noticed that uh, these civilizations uh, had their, their their music and representation so so they devised these pastorelas to tell the story uh, from the shepherds standpoint like the shepherds that that were giving like the annunciation that jesus maybe jesus was born so uh, in these pastorelas, people dress uh, with, like in this with, with these shepherd costumes. It's especially for small children, so they look really cute. Uh, they 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 dress. They some some play uh, the Virgin Mary, baby Jesus, blah blah blah. And uh, also uh, we have nativity scenes. So if you go to stores, uh, maybe to 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 department stores, you will find these uh, sets of nativity scenes. So they will always have the angel, the three wise men. The, uh, the the Virgin Mary, uh, baby Jesus, uh, Joseph, so, some animals, and this is also an example of Mexican art because you you will have those that are mass produced. But if you are in Mexico and, and Christmas is very beautiful because you see like if you go to the market, not to the, to apartment store, but if you go to the market, you will see lots of examples of Mexican handcrafts, and uh, if you look for for these ornaments they are made by hand and they are really really beautiful um so you can find like the tiny ones that everyone puts in their desks in the office or the big ones like life uh, size like it's 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 like a whole whole uh institution to to, to have this
And in Ukraine, we also have such an interesting uh, tradition. Then on Christmas Eve, uh, we should have uh, 12 different uh, dishes on our table. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so we cook uh, kutya. Uh, it's such kind of uh, uh, porridge, maybe. <laughs> I can't uh, uh, find uh, uh, some equal word for it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's also... Uh, it's interesting. Uh, have, maybe you have also something like this. I I want. They they told me maybe I am I am I am mistaken, but they told me or I understood that a kutia is prepared from the same ingredient than kriatska. Am I correct or I understood? Of course, it's prepared in cooking different ways, but but it's the same ingredient. Yes, it is from wheat. wheat uh -huh, it is from wheat. Uh, mm -hmm, I I mm -hmm. I've tried to find this because I have a friend, a Ukrainian friend, and uh, we were a trying to find and not uh, poppy and uh, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, raisins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I was because I, I I my friend was telling me like oh riachka and kutia and I was trying to find the ingredients um, here in Mexico. Of course, we have like raisins and, and, and spices and everything, but, but the main ingredient, like this uh, wheat in this form, it's <laughs> super hard to find. Uh, I was looking for uh, in specialty stores or in Amazon, trying to find it <laughs> because uh, I, I have some pictures of it and, and to me, never tasted, uh, never tried, sorry. Uh, it looks like uh, oats. I mean, in the pictures, but. I understand mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. it's, it's totally different thing. Many mm -hmm. many cook yes, cool. from pearl barley. Pearl barley. Okay. I will try to uh, And this. also we've got such a tradition that after Christmas uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the morning uh, people uh, uh, visit each other and uh, throw the seeds uh, everywhere. And oh. it means that they wish you prosperity and uh, wealth uh, during next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then during next year, you try to pick it up, all the seeds from all the corners of your house. <laughs> I, I have heard that some people do that uh, with lentils. I'm not sure. I've never seen it. But uh, it's something similar. I don't. I, I don't know. But uh, th these twelve dishes that you prepare, um, uh, I, I someone told me a colleague, Ukrainian colleague, that they are like vegetarian dishes, or or, or I understood incorrectly. Uh, those people uh, who really uh, uh, believe in God, yes, <laughs> and uh, they go to. Um, Orthodox uh, Church, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they've got uh, such a period of time when they don't eat uh, meat or milk products. Yes, and uh, they don't eat any meat uh, dishes. Until oh. Christmas Eve. So it's like fasting, like having a fast. Yeah, 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 really. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have forgotten this word. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So I, I forgot Ponsetia. So we are even. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you tell, tell please about uh, these dishes? Uh, Kutia, uh, what other dishes do you cook for this special? Oh, for example, my uh, mother-in-law, <laughs> she cooks mm -hmm. a lot. Kotlets, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it means my, uh, like meatballs and galupsi, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, uh, meat uh, in uh, cabbage uh, mm -hmm. and linsey uh, pancakes with with different fillings uh, and potatoes oh. with the mushrooms and so mm -hmm. on and so wise <laughs> oh, <I laughs> so uh, it's a lot really but well, let's see are these uh, these these uh, mines made with rice uh, inside yes. rolled yes. inside cabbage uh, and, and, yeah, and yeah, with yeah. a red sauce you have a yes, yeah. oh. uh, You know it really. Uh, my, 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 I told you, my friend was telling me about uh, Ukrainian food, so so he likes this dish. This is the only thing I know. Golubsi, <laughs> and I'm trying to learn about yeah, the, the, the different. 
<laughs> Have you tried Golfzi? No, uh, here uh, uh, in, 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 in 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 Mexico, uh, I, I I don't recall. I'm from Mexico City, so it's the capital. I don't recall. <laughs> I uh, I, yeah, I don't recall a Ukrainian restaurant. I, I I've in Mexico no. City. I've seen restaurants from other countries, but not that Ukrainian one. So we need someone from Ukraine to please come and open a restaurant here. <laughs> And, and be careful because uh, sometimes Russians they like uh, trying to uh, uh, looks like Ukrainians and they. I'm sad the... to say, I'm sad to say yes. that we have a Russian restaurant who it's not one but it's like uh, there are many, and we have a specific brand that it's like really present and super popular or tries to be popular in in, in social networks, and. Um, I understand that borscht is Ukrainian, uh, and I tried to learn about the food, but uh, as I said, I don't see uh, a, a, a Ukrainian food restaurant here. Maybe the situation is different in, in the US or in New Zealand. Mm, uh, so when I was in Germany, in Canada. Oh, uh, when I was in Germany and uh, we cooked Ukrainian dishes, uh, so Germans liked vareniki very much. And they asked me <laughs> to uh, teach them how to cook vareniki. <laughs> yeah, vareniki with potatoes, uh, with uh, cabbage, uh, with berries. So it's also rather tasty Ukrainian dish. I have a story. Um, I work with Ukrainian colleagues, and I've worked in the in the same company for many years. And um, we had years ago. A Ukrainian colleague came and, and she prepared Vareniki for us. It has been years and I have not forgotten Vareniki because it, it's like small dumplings and they were filled with uh, potatoes and she put some caramelized onions uh, mm -hmm. on the top of, of, of them. She was saying that, hey guys, you don't have smetana, like we have smetana in Ukraine, blah, 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 blah. It was, of course, uh, before, before the war. Uh, and, and I, I, I never forget this. This is like uh, the only Ukrainian food that I have tasted in Mexico cooked by a Ukrainian. But she, <laughs> she, left, she left because uh, it, it, she was not here like on permanent assignment, but she cooked for us. And I still remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but also <laughs> one more Ukrainian dish, it's Haladets. Uh, and uh, uh -huh. <laughs> it's uh, like uh, jelly from meat <laughs> broth. I have seen pictures of these. Oh my god! Yes. This seems quite controversial. <laughs> Everyone in Ukraine seems to love it. <laughs> but we were talking uh, no, to someone. No, no, we have discussion. We have discussion in Twitter. So we like we have this uh, uh, a very messed up, great fighting because we not decided. If for that it's normal normal food or it's disgusting. It looks oh my god, it looks like you um killed someone and put Don't look all at this... it, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> my mom my mom uh, she like she loves all that so much, but but I can't. For me, it's too much. I I, I can't. It's, it looks like uh, uh, have some uh, uh, soapy. <laughs> I don't know. How it's in. <laughs> but okay, okay like uh, not all Ukrainians like holidays. Not uh, everyone uh, inside country. We not decided yet. <laughs> Questions of holidays. <laughs> I can, uh, I'll share a, uh, an interesting story about that. Um, my mother-in-law is um, Ukrainian, so she's always making us uh, dishes. And she made the haladni the first time for me. She dropped it off. Uh, it was in the fridge, and I got it out. And I didn't realize you're supposed to eat it cold, so I put it in the microwave and heat it up. It just turned into chicken soup. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then she I taught me the proper way to eat it. I actually like it. It's good cold. But uh, yeah, if you put that stuff in the microwave, it turns into just chicken soup. That's it. <laughs> good tip. Good tip. <laughs> uh, 
no, no, no. It's I guess I guess every every country has its own exotic foods. I really so um uh, and in and we have a a, a joke. Uh, my my Ukrainian friend and I, he tells me about holodiet, and I tell him how uh, grasshoppers are a delicacy in some parts of Mexico. So he is like always bugging me with that. But really, really, uh, I mean, like uh, from the state of Oaxaca, where my father is from, uh, if you ever visit Mexico, you will see women with big baskets and, and we have the grasshoppers. Uh, of course, it's not like you just have a grasshopper from the street. No, 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 no. Uh, and we eat them uh, and they are really, really tasty. They are like a, 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 a source of protein. They are prepared of like with salt, with lime, uh, sometimes with chili. Uh, and, and people, I, I, I mean, people that, that I've spoken to from many countries, they say like, ah, how can you eat that? But <laughs> for us, it's normal. Uh, and we have a decision, we like them. <laughs> Some people in New Zealand eat um, what's called kina, which is sea urchins. I just put a picture in the chat. I, I don't like it, but... Some people love it. <laughs> they just eat it raw. Okay. Like you just pull it out it's of the from, ocean and eat it. It's from sea. It's from sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's eat it alive. Yes, it's it's still alive, and yep. you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you just crack it on a rock and eat it. <laughs> I, it looks like any any aliens <laughs> for me. <laughs> like, and I feel like. Sigourney Weaver from this. <laughs> the the English word for it is is sea urchin, um, but in in New Zealand we call it kina. It looks like um uh, something from Japanese food. Uh, I I saw I I don't know if it's the same mm. animal, but I think it's called awabi in in Japanese. Uh, in Spanish maybe it would be erizo de mar, oreja de mar. I don't know. And those are chapulines, ready to eat. Okay, it's it's it they are they are so... cooked. They are not it's, raw. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were you were going to say that it's not raw. No, I remember when I was a child. Eat them before I, I, they cool away. Mind, Diana, you know. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, it it looks like uh, small. Um, it it looks small, uh, like small cancers. Like in Ukraine, we have this. Um, it is insects, insect, insects. Insect? Yes, uh huh, insects. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, it it looks interesting. If I visited um, ever visited uh, Mexico. I will try one. <laughs> yeah, it's it is this. This is a bigger version. This is a single of these animals, but uh, what what we eat is like uh, oh! without the head, without the head, without the head. Um, uh, yeah, and they mm -hmm. are they are they are cleaned. So, for example, uh, it, it's not like you get them from you know, the street or something. No, to, no, to get it, them. It, it, if we have this uh, um, uh, crazy creatures, <laughs> and you know, it's very good decision because they uh, eat it um, plants, so it better eat it them. <laughs> I, I, I remember when decision. I was yes, I remember when I was like small child. Uh, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, preparing this, uh, and she. I was small. I was looking up to her. She was like near the stove, and and she put a pan, and and I saw and I saw like was expecting her to cook, and I said, "Hey, what what will you cook?" And she had a bag of something that moved. So there were these like animals, and she cooked them. And uh, this is my first memory of this. Uh, actually, uh, it may sound weird to you, but this is not a uh, like a cheap meal. You will find this in really traditional restaurants or or, or like in gourmet stores. It's not it's not cheap because it requires a lot of work to, to collect them, to clean them, to prepare them. So it mm. it was initially cheap food, but now it ain't. Now it's a delicacy. Like many foods. Yeah, it's a delicacy. Yeah. Cool. Guys, sorry, we have to wrap up now. It's been really fun though. Um 
I've learned a lot about interesting foods from all over the place. Um, did anyone else have anything, any last things they wanted to say before we sign out? I told story about God. Uh, it's everything I wanted for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm very Thank proud you, of my past. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Thank I you hope, so much, guys. Yeah, I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas and um, we'll see you next week uh, <laughs> either for lessons or for the group session or in the chat. Um, please feel free to share your uh, Christmas or Christmas food photos in the in the group. It'll be lovely to see. Yes, I will watch in everything and I wait at your pictures because I like to learn something new about people and countries. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> uh, thank you all for this uh, time. It was a great pleasure uh, to meet you, to talk to you. Thank you. Lovely to have you. Thank Thanks you, guys. Okay, thank bye, you everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.